Now, hemp, you could one day live in a house of hemp. Simon's going to be introducing us to this versatile crop over the rest of the week because if you're putting up a home, it's been hailed an environmentally friendly plant to build the walls from. Here's more from Simon. This is hemp, and it could be coming soon to a field near you because a major increase in hemp acreage is planned. I found this lot back in September before the harvest in the county of Rutland. Hemp is a close cousin of the cannabis or marijuana plant. It carries the same name, and you can see the similar distinctive leaf shape, but it doesn't have the same power as a drug. Instead, it has a lot of very practical uses, traditionally for making clothing. Also, nowadays, people are talking about hemp to make biofuels for transport. Uh, you can eat it. The seeds, for instance, can be ground down, you can make oil from them, which is quite fashionable nowadays. And what we're going to find out about hemp as a building material. Hemp is an age-old British cropper grown to make rope for the Navy and uh, for hemp fabric. Uh, now it could be in for a bit of a renaissance because it's being held up as an ideal plant to be used for the building of green homes. Uh, Simon's been on the hemp trail and today he brings us news of Britain's hemp harvest, which is forecast to expand by more than ten times over the next few years. And here it is at Doggett's Farm in Essex, after being chopped and left in the field for a fortnight to dry. It's not easy to picture this being used to build a house, but it will be. Uh, the original uses, I understand, is for rope making and uh, for sales for boats and the canvas for sales comes to cannabis. Dan Squires is backing hemp in a big way. He's switching a big share of the farm to hemp and he's become a director of the UK company which processes the crop. Apparently the hangman had to grow hemp in his garden to produce his rope so that he can go and earn his living. <laughs> Originally to us it was a very attractive because at the time of grain mountains and depressed uh, produce prices, we wanted something different to grow that was uh, for another use than food. Two or three weeks after cutting, this is what the hemp looks like. Not many leaves to be seen, that's all shriveled up. And here's the important part, it's the stem, which divides up into two useful bits. There's, first of all, on the outside, the fibres, and these are likely to go to be used in making car body panels in Germany. And then there's the woody bit called the shiv, and that is what's useful as a building material. Why use it? The hemp is like a carbon store because it absorbed the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide while growing, so anything which holds in the hemp holds in the carbon too. It fits in really well because it, it, it fits in the rotation as a cleaning crop for uh, weeds that are really expensive to control in rapeseed and in cereals, um, but it also spreads the workload on the farm, and so we sow it in late April um, and into warm ground and it grows very quickly and sometimes it'll grow as much as a foot or two a week and it'll end up in August, September uh, four metres high if you've had a good bit of rain and everything's gone well. So the growth is incredible, so it smothers all the weeds, uh, it is still absorbing water from the soil right through to the day you cut it. The bales are bounced, speared, and then stacked, ready to go off to the hemp processing factory. Two and a half acres of hemp, or one hectare, will produce enough shiv to build the walls of a house. Doggett's farm has assigned plenty of storage space to hemp because the acreage is about to soar here and at other farms recruited by the processing company, which is called Hemcore. I think the future is very rosy and it's very exciting. Why is that? Well, um, it, it, the demand for the product is growing rapidly. It's a, 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 a genuine replacement for mineral-based products and it will tie up uh, carbon in various ways because it's growing and the market for green uh, sustainable products is increasing rapidly uh, and, and so much so that the existing facility of processing plant is unable to cope with the expanding demand and Hemcor is putting a new factory in in Suffolk and it will instead of doing one ton an hour or two tons an hour at best we'll be looking at doing seven to ten tons an hour. Little noticed but 
Because of likely demand from different industries, the plant's supporters believe we're on the threshold of a hemp revolution. This year in the UK, there are 1,500 acres down to hemp. Next year, there will be at least 5,000. That'll be 20,000 in four years' time and at least 60,000 in 10 years. I think we'll see probably as many as eight or 10 processing plants scattered around the country. It's a bulky material to cart, so one would hope that uh, the 25,000 acres for a factory can be within, say, 50 or 60 miles of each one, and the crop grows really well right up into Yorkshire and the Midlands and down the southwest. And I can see a scattering of, of, uh, of, of factories uh, satisfying a local demand for the product, but also farmers locally being able to deliver it cheaply to the factory. And we'll be so the hemp is baled up, and it looks almost firm and strong enough to build a house from, which is exactly what's going to happen. And tomorrow, we'll explain how that's done. Well, Simon's got another film about hemp today. Uh, the first housing estate in the UK to be built from hemp is now under construction. Now, hemp, uh, being an ancient crop, uh, which has been used over the years to make rope, canvas, and indeed clothing, it, it used to be known as hangman's weed. Well, now it's being employed as a so-called environmentally friendly building material. Uh, there could be thousand more homes built in this way. Prizes for any more bugs spotted. Uh, that's just a joke. Simon's been finding out why. The hemp cycle from plant to house starts here in the field with hemp ready to harvest. It is the cannabis plant growing up to four metres high but without any power as a drug. After cutting it's left to dry at which point the useful parts become easy to look at. The strong fibre and the woody shiv. The shiv's been recognised as good for building and insulating and so to the construction site. This is in the village of Elmswell in Suffolk and it's a breakthrough in sustainable construction because this is the first housing development in the UK which uses hemp bound with lime in the walls here. So the walls are made of hemp and the point of this is it's all to do with climate change and reducing our emissions of carbon dioxide, the global warming gas, into the atmosphere and hemp is a material which if used in building can actually be carbon negative. All the exterior walls of the 26 affordable homes are built using hemcrete made from hemp which covers a wooden frame. You can see here on this gable end of the building that we've got the hemcrete material applied, it's in its unfinished state. Yeah. Um, there is a finishing render to go over the, uh, over the top of the, uh, of the hempcrete itself. Uh, but this is the material. So it's hemp yes. and lime. Correct. Well, it's a, li a lime-based binder. It's not just lime, it's a, a technically developed material to actually work well with the hemp, both in terms of how it's placed and also how it works when it's actually been placed. Uh, explain the environmental advantage then of using the hemp here. OK, well, the hemp is obviously a plant. It's a, a, a plant cultivated and grown. And when it's growing, because of photosynthesis, it's capturing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It releases the oxygen and captures the carbon into the plant material as plant cellulose. And effectively, the plant cellulose here, locked into the walls of the building, is capturing the carbon. And because of the lime-based binder, it's going to stay as cellulose. As long so as the building stays. Then. As long as the building stays. But even at the end of life, when the building's no longer wanting to be used, the material can be recycled. And so could you carbon... use any plant for that? No, there's, um, the, the characteristics of the hemp plant are quite, uh, are quite unique in the way that it's um, performing thermally. Um, it has quite an open texture inside the actual plant material and that helps thermally. So this is a very high performance thermal wall as well as being a very good carbon capturing sink for the material. Here are some of the sustainable materials that they're using here at Elmswell. Uh, for the roofs, cedar shingle, so that's wood, it's renewable. And for some of the insulation, that's wool, but mainly it's the hemp we've been following that has the great insulation powers. And here it is, the hemp shiv, as it was in the field, really, and that's what's being used here for the walls. 
The challenge is to mix the hemp shiv with lime, that's from quarried limestone, creating a mixture which turns as hard as stone once it's dried and matured over several months. It's done in a central mixer for the whole site and then the hempcrete is sprayed on the walls. It's a less wasteful process than it looks because any hemp which falls to the ground simply gets shoveled up and thrown in the mixer again. And it's sticky, even against glass. We've got quite a large volume with the number of, uh, of units that are being uh, built here. So with the large volume, it means that we've got quite a lot of material to move around. The benefit of the spraying is, is that the material is mixed in one location and transported through the hose to the position on the wall where we want it. Have you managed to sort of improve um, the way you, you do the building as you go along? Um, yes, we have. I mean, obviously, it's very new for everybody. We were keen to get into it for a start because we're an old established company and used to using the traditional materials and, you know, this sort of new traditional materials in a, in a radical way. So we, we were quite prepared to get into it. I mean, it has been a mighty learning curve. There's already a timetable to ensure that new homes are green in the sense that they have efficient heating and insulation once they're built. But the next big change will be to require that the building materials themselves haven't been made using a lot of energy, and so with lots of carbon dioxide emissions. Standard brick and concrete do badly on this measure because they're baked at very high temperatures. But hemp is a winner. It costs more, doesn't it? It, is, it does cost more. And I think, you know, I, mean, I think everybody who's taken this on has been sort of brave in the fact that, you know, I mean, in embracing nothing the new technology. But I believe, you know, in, in the long term, it's going to get cheaper. It's going to be cheaper when you're actually in the houses to actually run the, the heat and build this type of thing. It's going to be cheaper. Is this a one-off? Uh, no, absolutely not. I hope, I hope it's not a one-off. Um, we've certainly got a lot of other inquiries uh, for building with the material. We're anticipating that we're going to be uh, building a, a couple of thousand homes uh, e even in, in within a couple of years' time. And we hope to expand from that as well, to get up to uh, a serious mainstream material. The new residents of the Elmswell development in Suffolk will be moving in next year. One of the aims of the project was to demonstrate what can be done with hemp, so it's early days. But it's a sign of the revolution which is taking hold in construction as a result of efforts to tackle climate change. <laughs>